so welcome back everyone now in this video we are going to talk about express.js now express.js what is express.js express.js is express here it is uh, it's a web framework that is used to develop backend backend applications it can even be used to develop mobile applications but mostly it's used to develop backend applications now we know that java javascript runs mainly on the browser that's why it, sometimes it could not be reused to run on on a web server but with the help of node node which can help javascript to run outside the browser it means that it was possible to design a framework that could do backend and that's where express comes in express enables us to do some backend development now we have to set up our environment to develop in express now if you want to develop in express you need node and then you need to install express and then you need a browser and maybe a text editor of your choice now in this tutorial you will need to know at least some basic html probably we're not going to use much css here but some basic html and some basic javascript that's all you need to know for this course now we need to now download our node so you go to uh, nodejs.org slash english slash download depending on the language you use and then you install for your machine now in my case i'm using windows and i already installed node now after installing node what you do uh, we shall now open our command prompt so you open your command prompt or if you're on linux or mac os x open your terminal now after opening our command prompt we change to our desktop now when i reach my desktop i'm going to create a folder now the folder will be where i'm going to store my server or my server files so now to create my folder i'll do mkdir which is make directory mkdir make directory now the directory i'm going to make i'm going to call it my server i'm going to call it my server now after making my directory my server what you can do now is i'm going to create a, a, a new a file in that folder of mine with the help of the text editor i would like now to create a new folder i, I mean to create a new file you could do it in command prompt but me i would prefer to do it here on sublime text so in sublime text i'll go to projects add folder to project then i'll go to since my folder is on my desktop i'll go and look for my folder which is my server then i'll select that folder now in this folder I'm, i'll have to create a new file now the new file in this folder i'm going to save it and uh, check it's on my server and i'm going to call it server server.js so after creating my file server.js you can see that my file is created server.js now i can leave the file i can go back to my command prompt now in my command prompt i'm going to change my directory back to my server i'm going to change my directory back to my server now when i'm in my server let me clear when i'm in my server uh i am going to what initialize npm that's node package manager so i'm going to run npm in it now after initializing it will start to initialize my npm then it's going to ask for my package name. now my package name i'm going to leave it there to be my server that will be my package name meaning the name of of the folder or the package i'm trying to create which is a server now the version will be 1.0 the description i can just put in maybe my first you can put in my first server then the entry point should be my server address now what does the entry point mean the entry point means that this server will be accessed through server.js that is will be its entry point when requests are sent to my server so this all the requests will be sent to server.js now my test command i'll put nothing git repository nothing keywords nothing author you put my name i'll put my name as henry joseph henry joseph i'll put my slow cool. now license well, i'll leave that license the isc license then everything will look okay it will tell me to press yes and a key for yes and i'll click the key and then I can my i've already initialized the npm now to check if i whether i've initialized the npm i can come here and then i can see that the npm has been uh, my npm has been initialized the name here the version the description the main file or the uh, the entry point and then the other things now after this 
and after this this is windows it is C cls after this i now need to install uh, my express now to install express i'll put npm install express and i click enter this will take some time to get installed it's installing express So, as you can see, I've already installed uh, Express. So, after ex installing Express, I can clear my, my command prompt. Now, I will go back to my Sublime text. Now, here you can see that a new folder has appeared, Node Modules. And in the Node Modules, you will see there is Express here in the Node Modules. And if you also want to see whether uh, your Express has been installed, you can go to package.json. And then you can see that there is a new object that has been created here, Dependencies. And it has the Express version. 4.18.2 so now we have created our express our express server but now we need to add some functionality into the express server now to add some functionality you can go to your server.js and in server.js you create a variable a constant variable i'm going to call it uh, the constant variable i'm going to call it express now in this constant variable we are going to need to require express in the, we need to bring the express module into our server.js so to do that we uh, type in require and then we put in express now this express which i've put inside here this express should match the name of the module which is express now after that after that i'm going to have to create my application so i'm going to create application now excuse me to create my application and to create my application, I'll call const app. And in the app, I am going to call the express module or the express variable that I've created express. So then after that, I'm going to have to put a get request, meaning that if someone accesses, for example, if someone accesses our... But before that, let's first create the port on which we are going to listen. Now to create the port on which we are going to listen, I'll call my app.listen and then... After calling my app.listen, I'm going to try to listen at port 3000. So I will save it. Now after that, I'm going to have to start my uh, start my application now. Let me put that here. Let me bring this here. Then let me reduce this a little bit. So let me reduce this here. So then enlarge it back here this way now i'm going to need to start my to start my server now to start my server i'll run node now you need to be in the folder where the server.js is so i'll run node server.js it depends on whatever name you saved you write node run now as you can see the server is running but it is blinking i mean it's not showing anything whether it's running or it has stopped it looks like it has stopped but the server is running now if i go to my browser to access the server in my browser, I'm going to, you have, you have to type local, local host, then the local host you're listening on port 3000. Now when you run, it said cannot get. Now what happened here is simple. The browser sent a get request, or it sent a request to our server, which is listening at port 3000. When it sent that request, there was no response from our server. There was nothing there's nothing in our server about listening at po I mean listening at what at the home directory which is at port 3000 so the server did not reply so we need to work on the reason why the server did not reply but first let's first solve this problem nothing is showing here when you run the server so to stop the server you press ctrl c and the server will be stopped now to for something to appear in the server i'm going to have to write a callback function now, if you are familiar with JavaScript, you know what a callback function is. Now, console.log, I'm going to log me. Uh, what I will log is that the server has started. The server has started. 
Now when I save this and I come back here and then I run my node server.js, you can see that now the server has started has been shown on when I run my server. So this I can press Ctrl C to stop. Uh, Ctrl C to stop the server. Uh, Ctrl C and the server has been stopped. Then I can uh, CLS this. Now I, I misspelled server here. Uh, let me delete that server. Then maybe I can put here dot dot dot. Now our other problem which we had, which was when we access our access our website or access our server at port three thousand, we are not seeing anything. That's because we don't have a get request. Now we need to create a get request. Now to create a get request, we come here and we type app dot get. Now this is how we create a get request. Now the first argument in the in the get in the get function will be our route. Now our route is the point where we want to access the website from, but I will explain it further in deep down videos. But that you can the point where we want to access the server from. So I need the home route. So then again the other argument that it takes is a function or a callback function. Now the callback function has two has two arguments also that it takes. It takes in the request argument and then it takes also the response argument. And then I can now open my server. Now, when when a person comes here to the browser and accesses our what home directory, which is just port three thousand slash, and accesses our home directory, we should do something. So what we should do, we should just call response dot send. Now we are going to send something to the. Uh, we are going to send something to. To the to the website now what we're going to send is hello world so let's save now we should also start our server to start our server node then this name of the server which is server.js now the server has started now since the server has started when i come here and i run you can see that hello world has been sent now in this sending object you may not only send text you could also send html so for me to put HTML code, maybe I want to send H1. Let me use lowercase. H1. I want to send a H1 tag of hello world. And I can close H1. Maybe put here an exclamation mark. Ah, then I save. Now when I save, I need to first stop my server. Now you can see that this is tiresome, but later on, I'll show you how to do this automatically. So I'll say CLS. Then... I'm going to start my server, which is node server.js, and my server has now started. Since my server has started, I can now run my code, and you can see that now a H1 tag has been created. So this is a simple way of how you create, you how you start up your development environment for for express for ExpressJS, and how you can do some simple server. Yes, you can create some simple server now. Thank you for watching. Meet you in the next video. Thank you. So welcome back. Now in this video I'm going to go into depth in how to explain how you handle requests and how you uh, you reply to requests. Now remember when if we look at a, a basic web browser, eh? let me open up my uh, let me open up paint Paint, i think would be better let me open up paint and let's go through something here now what i'm going to do i'm going to create two objects there is maybe this is my computer and then i will create this that as my computer then i'm going to also create maybe this as my server maybe this would be my server let me create it there so this box is my computer and this is my server. Now what happens is this. The computer, which has the knowledge of the URL, will send the request to the server. The server will process the request and send back information to the computer. Now in a normal static website, what happens is that the server, I mean the computer sends a request to the, to the server. Then the server sends files back to the computer.
computer and then these files are run locally on the computer the javascript is executed on the computer now with the help of express when you build our backend server what happens is this the computer sends a request to the server right the server gets that request processes everything in the server makes the return and, and returns all the processed data back into files the two html files css files and then it sends that data to the computer the computer doesn't need to process that that, that is how it works. Now the computer can send different types of requests. It can send a get request. Now a get request just implies that I would like some to get some information back according to the endpoint that you put. Also, uh, it can also send a post request. And those are the two main requests that we shall be working on. The get and then the post. Now to work on our rep our uh, get request, we did it previously, but now. We are going to create another get request. Now I'll call app.get. Now the first parameter I'll enter, or the first argument I'll enter, will be my route. Now the route could be maybe if someone goes to the route slash contact. Then I would I would like to send to that person some information, uh, depending on uh, some information about the contact they want, they are requesting for. So I'll say function. Now this callback function will take in some two arguments. The request and then the response but with conversion we don't need to type request with conversion you will see you type rec for request and rest for response that's how uh, people usually write uh, express code now after this we are we shall now have to what uh, send some contact back to the person so i will say rest dot send now to send back when the person accesses that url so what i'll be sending back to the person will be uh, let's say send h uh, maybe h1 tag and remember the send function can also handle uh, can you can put in html tags in it so what i'm going to send may be my address is let's say what address should i say g n g e at gmail that will be my contact address dot com now that's what it will send when someone accesses this server at slash contact so then to, to make this into fruition we first have to stop our server because there are changes that have been made after stopping our server we start our server which will be node server of js we start it and you can show us here the server has started go to our browser and run this we are still seeing hello world is because at the route we are accessing is the wrong one but remember we made a new route called contact so we now have to access our contact route so to access our contact route we shall say slash contact and then we run now when we access our contact route, you can see that this information has been returned as my contact. Now that is a get request. But remember, there cannot only be get requests, there are post requests. But I will explain about the post request later on. Now you can create another uh, you can create another endpoint to be accessed on your server. So you can say app.get. Then what I'll I'll call maybe slash probably I could say home. Then uh, I'll make my function, and this function, remember, it takes in a request, and then it takes in a response, and then we run. Now you could be wondering, what is that request object? How does it look like? So I can console dot log it so that you can see what it looks like. Now when I console dot I'll console dot log, wait, I run. So here, I first have to stop my server because some changes have been made. Then I'll rerun my server. So after rerunning my server, I'll come back here on my website and I'll access the endpoint home. Now when I access the endpoint home, nothing usually will be sent. But when you come back here, when you come back here, you can see that uh, the request object has been printed. Now you can see that the request object has very many things. You could go through all of them, but you only use you go through what uh, is necessary to but this is how the request object uh, looks like it sends all these requests this is the object it's to send to the server and then the server will look at this request and pull, pull out the data that it wants and then it will process process according to the way the, uh, the person who sent the request wants it and then it will send it back uh, to the to the website to that endpoint which has been created on the website okay 
So that is our get request. And that's how we uh, do some requests in Express.js. Thank you for watching. So welcome back. Now, in this video, I'm going to go in depth into routes, what a route is. Now, a route, let's go to, to our paint. Then let me delete this. Delete. Now, again, we have our, probably our computer here. Then we have our, let's put here my server. Let me make it look like a, maybe a real database, something like a database server. Then I can pull that and then that. Okay, this is my server. Now, when you look at uh, a URL, when you look at a, a, a name of a URL, probably if you want to see the name of a URL, let's let me get a pen, this pen. Probably maybe the website is x.com. Probably x.com. Now in x.com slash, there's, there would, could be some words here. Slash, some words, slash. Now this is what we call a route. Or it is an identifier or a point on the server where some specific processing is done and some specific data is sent back. So this is what we call our route. So this is our website name. But this website name can have very many routes, very many, very many routes. It depends on how big the website can be big and has very many routes. Now, it, the route is spelled as L O U T L. Some of them, some people pronounce it as root, but me, I'll pronounce it as route. Now, when someone sends a request here to to the what to the server, maybe he he would would go in the browser and put in the URL which contains routes and then he sends a request. Now this this request that he has sent usually it's a get request. Usually when you put a URL in a browser and, and click enter you are sending a get request. If you click if you have a form an HTML form and then you click submit it means that usually you are sending a post request to the server. You're sending a post request to the server now so when someone types in our maybe probably it's x.com then maybe here it is f slash maybe x somewhere here on the server this route f slash x would be defined it will be defined and to be defined according to the request that sends this exact route so this route could be defined twice. It could be defined as a get request if someone is requesting a get request at this route or if someone is requesting a post request at this similar route and it will still be defined. So the computer, that's how what, the, what exactly a route is. It's just these things, these slashes we usually put in the website name. So uh, let's make another route in the, with, the, with the new understanding. So we can say up dot get and then maybe the route we shall put is probably let's put f slash x that's our route it doesn't need to make sense usually now we put our callback function which will have a our request and then it will have our res and then uh, we start our function off so now in our function when that happens we shall respond by sending we shall respond by sending let's say we shall send let's send what f slash less than f you are on let's say you are on the route f slash x so that's what we shall send when someone accesses that so first we need to stop our server after stopping our server we can clear and then we can start our server again so let's start our server after starting our server we can come here and then we go to the route f slash x and then you can see that it has shown us that you are on the route f slash x so that is how uh, that's that's how routes usually work in simple terms that is how routes work thank you for watching now welcome back now in this tutorial i'm going to show you how to note how to use ex your express server so that you don't need to continuously stop it and restart it after you have made a change so now to make this possible first we need to let's identify our problem for, for example if we start our server you can see the server has started and then we go to our browser we go to our endpoint here run it you can see this now what if i come and then i change here probably in route f slash x maybe i'll put f slash o and then i save if i come back here and i run it you can see the changes have not been put on what 
on the server. So for the changes to be put on the server, I need to stop the server. Control C is to stop the server. After stopping the server, I need to rerun it. Now when I rerun my server and I come back here and access it, you can see that the change has been made. Now this could be tiresome. Now to solve this problem is easy. Uh, you can stop my server. Now to solve this problem, go to your command prompt. And then in your command prompt, install. Just do npm. Just do npm install dash g which is global. It will install it globally throughout all your projects of Node. Install npm, npm install dash global Node mon. After that, you click enter and install Node mon. We already have Node mon installed. So after installing Node mon, you will have it installed on your desktop. Now what we do, we now need to run our our file to run our server. I mean, now previously we would use Node server.js. That's the name of our server. But in this case, we are going to say node mon, and then we run our server. When we run our server using node mon, now when you come back here, and probably uh, this is the initial information that is there, you are on the route f slash ox. But if we want to change this maybe to a capital, and then also route, we need to change it also to an R, and then maybe this, we need to change it to a capital uh, X, and then slash o then maybe slash v and then immediately i save you can see that my changes will be worked upon it means that i no longer need to look 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 at my restarting and stopping myself every time i make a change so when i come here and i refresh you can see that my changes have been made so that is how you uh, you set up yourself so that you don't need to continuously start and stop the server every time you make a change so thank you for watching so now we are going to create a calculator app using Express.js. Now to do so, first we need to uh, start our new project. So change directory into your desktop. Now in your desktop, we are going to make a directory. In that directory, we are going to call it cal. So after making our cal directory, I uh, will go to my, I will go to Sublime Text. And then when I am in Sublime Text, I will remove this folder from uh, from the project. I'll come here to Project, and then I'll add folder to Project. Go to my desktop. In my desktop, I look for cal and then select that folder of cal. Now, in this folder of cal, I'm going to create a new file. In the file, I'm going to call it calculator. Calculator.js. So, after creating my calculator.js, I will go back to my command prompt, change into the directory cal. When I'm in my the directory cal, I'm going to do npm in it. I'm going to initialize npm. So as npm is getting initialized, uh, my package name will be cal. My version 1.2 description will be a simple calculator app. Calculator app. Then my entry point will be my calculator.js. And then test command git. Then author. I forgot to write my author. Okay, but okay, it's okay. Yes. Then I am done initializing npm. Then I need to install express. So I will say npm install express. And then express will get installed. Uh, but this may take may take some time to install Express, depending on the internet. It will depend on your internet speed, the time it will take. The Express has finished installing. So after Express has installed, you can come back here to Sublime Text and you can see everything is working properly. Now since everything is working properly, what I'm going to do uh, is start my, probably let's not, not first start our what? Let's not first start our server. So then, here we need to require we need to require express so i'll say const express will equal to require then i need to type in the module name which is express that is the one for express then i need to create an app so i'll say const app will equal to uh, express then that will be how i start my app then on my app i need to listen on a certain port which is me i will choose port 3000 but you can choose any port to listen on. So I'll say I want to listen on port 3000. Then I'll have to put in a callback function, which will help to display to display something to the screen when my server is started. So what I'll console.log when my server has started in the tab, I'll console.log. Console.log, the server has started. And I'll call the calculator server has started. calculator server 
has started. So if my calculator server has been started, my calculator server has been started, uh, that is how I'm going to start doing my my calculator project. So in the next video, we shall dive deeper into how to set everything up for our calculator project. Thank you for watching. So welcome back. Now in this video, what we are going to learn is how to respond a request with a HTML file. It means that when someone sends a request, they get request. Instead of us sending some text, we shall just send back an HTML file. So to do that, come to your curl directory, create a new file. And this new file, you can name it index.js and you save it. Uh, not index.js, supposed to be index.html. Sorry for that. New file, save it as index.html. So after saving our in index.html, I won't use the shortcut of HTML to create a, or to create my own doc HTML document. The title I'll call it calculator. Calculator. And then uh, my title here will be my H1. Put it my H1. And my H1 will be calculator. Calculator. And then I'm going to create a form. Form. Now in my form, what I'm going to do is in my form tag here, I'm going to add in some things. So I'm going to add in action. And then the action I'm going to put maybe index.html. That would be my action. And then on action I'm going to put in method, meaning that which method do I want to send this form with? And the method which I want to send this form with will be post but i'll explain that further now we need to create our our input fields for the two numbers so i'll first create my first input field um, the type will be text the name will be num1 now this name is important in the case that this name in the server side it will be like the variable you shows when that when this specific data of the input is sent to the server the name will be like the variable you chose now I'm going to put in a placeholder. In the placeholder will be maybe first number, depending on what you would like to put there as the placeholder. The first number. Then I'm going to create another input, and then this input will still be of text. Will still be of text. The name instead this time will be num2, which means number two. And then my placeholder will be second number. Uh, it will be second number. Then I need to create my submit button. So to create my submit button, I'll put sub. To create my submit button, uh, I'll put button, the button tag. And my button tag is opened. It's going to uh, be calculate. Calculate. Then the type would be submit. The type will be submit. Then its name be submit so that is my simple HTML file with the fields I need to create my calculator so now let's go to our calculator.js now in our calculator.js we need to put our endpoint when a get request is sent so when a get request is sent up don't get and then that get request is our home directory then we need then it uh, it, it will take in a function which it will send for us a request and it will send for us a response now this data on the forms will be in the request object this request object now this should not be should just be res this will be our request object so now we need to send back an HTML file. But to send back a HTML file, what I will do, I'll say res dot send then dot send file. Now this send file needs a URL of where exactly my file is located. Now the problem with this is if I just put as my URL to be maybe this current directory, then I put index dot HTML. This is bad because if this if this 
file or this server is put on another maybe it's it's put on some other computer to to run it and it is put in a different location and it's being pulled from different locations this could be a problem this way of defining our URL could be a problem and our server here our calculator.js may be unable to access the index.html so to work on this what we do we just do dash dash dir now dash dash directory name what it will do it will give us the url of this current directory we are in and after that we can add on to that current directory slash index dot html so we save now after saving we can go to our we can go to our web browser and in our web browser we shall go to the home directory and we run our home directory sorry for that we shall run our home directory now nothing is happening in our home directory we did not start our server now to start our server we do node mon calculator.js and our server will get started since our server is started we refresh here and you can see that the html file has been sent back you can see that it is on now on our website so that is how you respond to a get request by sending back a file so let's first do some small recap to do that we call the res or the respond variable that is sent through the get request we use dash dash dir the reason why we use it is because uh, our file position may change with time it may change with time that's when if it run it on another person's server that dash dash deal which my, we might have defined might be different so we use an environment variable of dash dash deal to put in the current directory wherever the file is located and then we add slash index.html after defining our html file and in our html file we have our name attribute and this name attribute where the whatever name i give in it would be the variable that we shall use or we shall need when we are uh, when we are working in our calculator the js as i will show you in the next video thank you for watching so now welcome back now in this video what we are going to do we are going to see how our server or our calculator.js can respond to this file that we have sent it how 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 is it be able to respond to the information that it gets now to do this we need to install certain uh package manager so i will stop my server here Control c and my server will be stopped i'll clear now this the package you need to install is body uh, this one is hard to pronounce one phaser now npm install body dash phaser now this body phaser you should install it in the directory where your your server is so that is the thing we need to install me i already have it installed so i will not repeat to install it so after installing our body phaser what we do we need to now require it into our file now to require our body phaser into phaser phaser into our file what we do you come here then you create a new variable cost and then the variable I'll create will be body phaser will equal to require and then the name which i need to put here in the require is the name of that module or the body phase and the name of the body phase is body dash phase so after after requiring our body phase we now need to enable our app to use the body phase so now i'm going to explain what the body phase done does along the way so use then we are going to call in body phaser then dot url encoded meaning that should phase we should remove that data which is in the url that has been sent and then we say extended extended is equal to true so what this does it will allow you to uh, it will allow to phase nested objects so if you have an object in an object in an object it will allow you to to face it or face it so that now our app will be able to use the body phaser now since now our app is able to use the body phaser what is a body phaser 
So, remember previously, let me go to, let me go here. Let me remove this. Remember, let me delete. Remember when this information is passed in the request object, meaning the request object. Let's, let me use a pen, pick a pen, pick some thickness, very brush. If it passed, if, if, this, op, if this information is passed in, the body object or the request object, usually we have a request object here like this. And this request object has a lot of information, a lot of information. But the information we need is just the form data. That data in the form. That is the only information we need. The form data. And this information in the form data, we need to phase it out or like pass it out, like remove it out. And that's the only information we need. But does not mean that this other information we cannot access it. We can still access it, but this body phase is supposed to, act to remove the information we need to use. So, after this, we have already uh, initialized our body phaser. So let's go back here to our browser, and then uh, we come back here, start our start our server, NodeMon. But why am I repeating to type NodeMon calculator.js? And our server has started, but you can see that we have an error, and the error is saying body phaser is not defined. So this node mode will help you to catch errors, and the way it will help you to catch errors is this: it will show you that in calculator.js on line six, the problem is here on body phaser, and it's saying body phaser is not defined. And this is quite a common error when you're working with with express.js. So we can see that I misspelled phaser this side so here i'll recorrect it phaser save and the moment i save uh, nodemon will restart will restart my code for me and you can see that everything is now okay so that is how you catch errors now you run so when i run i can see that everything is okay so i can click one two then i calculate and then it says cannot post at slash index.html now, the reason why it cannot post at slash.index.html is because we have not yet we have not yet defined our our post request. So we need to now define our post request. So on app dot post, we shall define our post request. Now on our post request, we shall put slash as our route. Then we shall put function. It will take in the same thing. It will take in a request object. And then it will take in a rest object and then everything will be okay and then there now we're going to console.log our request body so we shall say uh, console.log rec dot body so so we can see how our body will look like so we save and then we go back to our browser here and uh, we uh, run our our code. When we run our code, we go back to our command prompt and see if our browser has been console.log. But it has not. Our request object has not been console.logged. So we press one, two, run, and we check if it has been console.log. It has not been console.log. Now remember back here when we are defining our index.html the action. So the action you can see that the action we defined was index.html. But in our app.js, the route we provided was slash the form route. That's the route we provided. But the route here on the form is index slash HTML. That's why nothing is happening. So we need to update our routes. So we are coming on action and update our route. So after updating our route, we save, go back to our browser, run, I mean, cancel this, go back here, run our code. So after running our code, come back we see there is nothing we try to post something one maybe two calculate we have posted it nothing has happened is because we have not yet defined anything to happen but you can see the request object has been printed onto the screen now remember you may ask where does this num1 num2 submit come from with the different variables in it so where it comes from it comes from our form here in our form, when we define our name as num1 and our name as num2 and the other name as submit, these are the names that Express will pull out and then assign them as variables and put them into objects and send them to your server, which is your calculator, dot js. So that is uh, what it would be. So then, 
we need to do some calculations on on what on the we'll do our calculation and then send back the information on the what to the computer now to do this it is simple what we come here on our post we create our variables we shall create our variable num1 will equal to uh, num1 will equal to request dot body dot num1 that will be our first variable so i can copy this i can copy this paste here make my num2 and then i can make my variable result variable result which will equal to num1 plus num2 and then i can i can what I can respond back to the to the what respond back to this request and then I re respond back I'll call send and then in the send what I will send back is the answer is the answer is this plus then result as simple as that so let's go back to our browser you say one two calculate see if my server is running so my server is running properly and I can put 1 plus 2 calculate and you can see it has sent me back 12 now 1 plus 2 is not 12 1 plus 2 is 3 so try to figure out where the error is you can pause the video and try to look through the code and see where the error is but if you don't want we can continue to see our error now our error is here in our index.html we define the the data type of the information we are sending to our server as text not number so since we define our information as text it comes in in the request object as text so this is a text number so what javascript is doing it's concaten concatenating concatenation or concatenating one and two instead of adding them to it's just putting them together to make 12. so to remove this problem what you can call is number to convert this text into number and then we also call here number to convert this same, this same text into number we save after saving our, our server will restart automatically go back to our browser go back one plus two calculate you can see that the answer is now three so this is the these are the basics it's the absolute basics of express but you can see that Express is quite easy to use. It's quite an easy framework to use. If you've ever used Django before uh, or Flask, you can see that also Express is, uh, is easier to use. So someone could only learn JavaScript and be able to do, to do full stack web development without needing to learn in another language like Python or Java or Ruby on Rails. So this is the, uh, the basics of Express JS. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this series and if you enjoyed these videos, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. See you in the next series or in the next video that I will upload. Thank you.